نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدن السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل وسلم بارك على سيدنا ولان محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وسحبه دائما أبدا سلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله سموك Last week we started talking about basically events that led up to the incident of Garubela. You know, coming, going back. Uh, because these events again were not things in isolation. Uh, but these are things that built up over time. Uh, and then you end up having a situation where such an extreme action could be taken that the grandson of the messenger, peace be upon him, along with his family members were massacred. You know, and this is it's important to understand, this is not even 50 years after Rasulullah Sallallahu you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu he passed in the month of uh, Rabi al-Awwal, in the 11th year of Hijri, and Karbala occurred in the month of Muharram, 61 Hijri. So two months less than 50 years. Which is interesting, and this is some one point that uh, will be important to kind of keep up with as we as we talk about the the pre-events is that like even governments today you know if there's something they don't want the people to know they'll have this special inquiry into it and then they'll seal the documents for 50 years yeah. no one can see the documents for 50 years and then even when they release them you know half of them are blurred out so you can't really see it why 50 years because they know that by 50 years afterwards the people that really cared about what happened most of them are either dead or old and can't do anything and everybody else has forgotten about it I mean, you look at like the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. when they had the inquiry into it what did they do? they sealed it up for 50 years 50 years they, afterwards they released it and you know half of it was blacked out and no one cared So this is, you know, so the event of Karabala happened not even 50 years after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as I said last week, you know, this fight or this, uh, I guess, the struggle between good and evil, you know, has been on, going on since the beginning of time. Islamically, Though, you know, to kind of clarify one point, you know, Islamically, what is good and what is evil? Whatever is in line with Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is good, period. Rasulullah Sallallahu Himself is the definition of good. And whatever goes against that is bad. Just like in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Hizbullah, the party of Allah. And he also talks about Hizbullah Shaitan, the party of Shaitan. So whoever is in line with the commands of Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, this is good. He is in the party of Allah. And whoever goes against that is in the party of Satan. History is always biased, you know, depending on who's looking at it. Anyone who says that he's not biased is a liar. Everybody's biased. 
It's just, you know, depending on your background and everything else, you're always biased in one direction or the other. You know, Islamic history, you have to bias it in accordance with what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, want. In order to understand that, you have to have that basic understanding of what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, want from us. And so this is important to remember throughout all of this. Because Allah in the Quran, when He talks about the companions of Rasulullah so He says what? He said, the radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. That Allah is, you know, that they are, ple Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So this notion that some people try to throw out, especially when talking about Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar, that they changed during the time of the Prophet some they were good, but then afterwards they changed. You know, one is a challenge to the Quran, but it's also a challenge, more directly a challenge to the knowledge of Rasulullah and his foresight that he didn't know what kind of people these are next to him. Who are still next to him. You know, they're buried next to him. Last week we left off where, you know, we were talking about how the hypocrisy, this movement of hypocrisy started and how they wanted to undermine everything that Rasulullah did and everything that he stood for. And so, during the time, during the time of Rasulullah of course they were exposed and they couldn't really get anywhere. Now during the time of Abu Bakr, what happens initially is that immediately after the passing of the messenger with the exception of Hijaz basically with the exception of Makkah and Medina and Ta'if and just a few other areas all of Arabia apostated almost all of these people were people who had just become Muslim you know within the past two years and then when the messenger passed you know, and their concept was that he was like he was like any other human being. So him passing is just like anybody else passing. And this was one of the arguments used by the people who refused to give zakat. And they came to Abu Bakr and they said that our agreement was hit with was with him and now that he is gone, so too the agreement is ended. So we want a new agreement. We don't want to give zakat. Before this, you know, we were talking last week as well, you know, like immediately after Rasulullah passed. You have the situation where, you know, the decisions are made as to whether to make, you know, to bathe him, uh, you know, and all of these things. One other decision that was also brought up was, do we make Salatul Janazah on him? The funeral prayer, do we make it on him or not? You know, when anybody else dies, what do we do? We do Salatul Janazah. We, sh we bathe him, we shroud him, and we do the funeral prayer. But part of the funeral prayer is what? We pray to Allah, oh, you know, that we start off with, Allahumma gfir hayyina wa mayyitina. That Allah forgive those uh, who are present and those who have passed hmm? praying for the deceased one however the prophets are masum they are innocent they have no sins and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is Sayyidul Masumin he is the leader the master of those who are innocent so how can you make this prayer oh Allah forgive him when there's nothing to forgive so the companions, when they were, they, they, when this question came up, do we do Salatul Janazah on him or not? The decision was made, there will be no Salatul Janazah, the way we make Salatul Janazah. Because we cannot ask, to ask for forgiveness for him is a sin. Because that implies that he made a sin. That he committed a sin. And yet he's sinless. So the companions, they said no, no Salatul Janazah in that form. 
You know, if you read the books of history and hadith, they talk about the Salatul Janazah of Rasulullah. So, well, what was the Salatul Janazah of Rasulullah? The religion. Hmm? It was simply Salatul Salam on Rasulullah. So, so. The companions would come into the room where he was shrouded, ten at a time. Ali Radin would be inside and he would teach them what to say. And they would, they would recite salawat, blessings upon him, and then move on. And then the next ten would come. And then the next ten, and the next ten, and the next ten. Until all of the companions had this opportunity to do this. During this process, what happens in, in Medina is that the hypocrites spread a rumor among the people that, oh, Omar has become the Khalifa. Omar, Radio, of course, had nothing to do with this. So the rumor spread that Omar has become the Khalifa. So the Ansar called a meeting. You know, the Ansar had some hard feelings toward Omar, Radio. Because Omar Radio had married one of the Ansar women and then he divorced her. So when the rumor spreads that he's become, and the hypocrites spread this rumor specifically because they knew that this would cause some turmoil. You know, we spread the rumor and, you know, see what happens. So Uthman Radhan came running to Abu Bakr and Omar Radhan told them that, look, you know, this is, this is rumor is spreading. And there was a meeting going on about with the Ansar in a separate place. They're trying to figure out what to do. Abu Bakr Radion comes to Ali Radion tells him what's going on, and Ali Radion tells them, Go and you deal with this. Handle this while I'm taking care of things here. So Abu Bakr and Omar Radion they go. And on the way they meet Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah and they take him along as well. They arrive at the meeting and you know meetings going on as to who will be the leader after Rasulullah so, so, so some of the Ansar are saying that you know we should be the leaders we're the ones who helped helped all of these people supported him <coughs> and then the narration where Rasulullah so, so said that the Khalifa will be from Quraysh was brought up so that excludes the Ansar And so the people of the Ansar, they say, look, we were the helpers of, helpers of Rasulullah Sallallahu and his companions, and we will remain the helpers of the Khalifa, of the leader. So Abu Bakr Radha, he takes the hands of Omar and Abu Ubaidah Radha, and he tells them, he says, choose one of these two. And both of them raise the hand of Abu Bakr Radha and say that you are the Khalifa, and they give allegiance to him, and now everybody gives allegiance. And after this, after the meeting, now they come back. And when they arrive, Ali Radion is placing the blessed body of Rasulullah in his resting place. When time for Salat came, everybody formed the rose. Abu Bakr Radion, after the Iqamah, he makes an announcement. He's, he doesn't go forward to lead the Salat. Abu Bakr Radion makes an announcement that I led 17 Salat during the time of Rasulullah so according to his order, under his command. So now whoever is the best among men should lead the Salat. Ali Radion understood what he was saying. He was actually referring to Ali. Ali Radun was in the third row. And Ali Radun came comes forward from the third row with tears flowing down his cheeks, puts his hands on, on the shoulders of Abu Bakr Radun and nudges him forward and says, When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, placed you forward, then who can pull you back? When all of these places were apostating, you know, everybody gave bayah or allegiance to Abu Bakr Radun openly. Ali Radun did not. And, and Abu Bakr Radun did not demand it from him. There was no need. And even today in the spiritual realm, when you have a sheikh, when you have a spiritual teacher, you know, if you have two students of the same spiritual teacher who have given allegiance to him, 
after that teacher passes, there's no need for one to give allegiance to the other. Sometimes they do, but there, it's not a necessi necessity. But when, the, when all of these places started apostating, and the companions started discussing what do we do, and, and Abu Bakr was on one side, and all of the other companions were on the other side. Abu Bakr says that I will fight them until my last breath and bring them back into line, even those who have, who have refused to give zakat. And, I, and all of the other companions said, no, we can't fight them. We don't have the, have the power to fight them. And also, how can we fight these other Muslims? Those who weren't giving zakat. They didn't say we're not Muslim. They said, we just don't want to give zakat. Zakat, of course, is one of the obligations. They denied the zakat altogether. Not only that we don't want to give it, it's not necessary because we, have, we want a new agreement. It was the decision of Ali Radun that pulled everybody toward the side of Abu Bakr. Because Ali Radun was the one who, decide, who, who made the statement, reciting the verses of the Quran, where Allah SWT says that, Woe unto the mushrikeen, unto those who associate partners with, with Allah. And those who refuse to zakat, give zakat, in the end, they are disbelievers. And so this is when This is when everyone shifted. This process of dealing with all of these tribes that had apostated took roughly six months. Many companions were martyred in this process, but eventually everybody falls back into line. At the end of the six months, is also when the daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the princess of the universe, Bibi Fatima Salamu Alayha, passes away. And this is, after this is when Abu uh, Ali Radun openly gives the bayah to Abu Bakr Radun, so there's no doubt. Not because he needed to, but now there's no doubt that he supports him, so people start spreading, the hypocrites start spreading the rumor, oh, you know, see there's an issue between them, otherwise why would, did he give allegiance to him? And there are even people today who try to use this. Oh, see, they were, he was upset. Ali was upset with Abu Bakr, and this is why he didn't give allegiance to him. You know, when you look at the actions of a person, you have to look at the character of that person to understand the actions. We look at the character of Ali. He is Asadullah. He is the Lion of Allah. He did not fear anything. When Rasulullah Sallallahu started spreading the message openly, you know, first three years after revelation is secret propagation. He only talked to those who were very close to him, you know, and he did not talk openly in public. At the end of the three years, the mess, the revelation comes, where Allah Subhanahu wa says, "One, one the Rashirat al that call those who are close to you your relatives. So Rasulullah he goes on Safa and he invite he calls Banu Hashim and Banu Muttalib, the two tribes that were closest to him. And he invites them to Islam. You know, to the oneness of Allah and him being the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, you know, this is when Abu Lahab you know, raises his hand to Rasulullah and saying, you called us here for this? You know, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but the point I want to emphasize here is that after that, you know, this goes here, everybody dispersed. So now Rasulullah approaches Ali Radun, and Ali Radun this time is 13 years old. He says, let's have a dinner for all of them, and then we can talk again, you know, in a better environment. His uncle, Hazrat Abu Talib, the uncle of Rasulullah is the one who arranges the feast at his house. The feast took three days before Rasulullah finally could speak. Because the first day he tried to speak, Abu Lahab again interjected. The second day the same thing. The third day finally, you know, 
uh, Rasulullah starts to speak. And he invites them to Islam, you know, to the oneness of Allah, the oneness of the Creator. You know, and he tells them that if you accept this message, then you will be successful. And he also tells them that this message will be spread throughout the world. Sure. And then he asks them, he says, who, who amongst you is ready to support me in this? And no one gets up. Everybody's still sitting. And then finally, Ali, who is 13 years old, he is the youngest, and he says it, he said, I am the youngest amongst you, and I am the weakest amongst you. Because as a young boy, he was a, what you'd call today a frail young boy. Even though his strength, his real strength was something different. He says, I am the weakest among you, and I am the youngest amongst you, but Ya Rasulullah I will support you, and I will, I will aid you in this mission. And all of everybody else, you know, all these family members sitting there all got a chuckle or a laugh out of this. Thinking, oh, you know, these two think that they're going to conquer the world. That this message will be spread everywhere. Because they're thinking, oh, it's not even going to get past this, this meeting. When Rasulullah took the army against Khaybar. You know, Khaybar being the, the strong fort city of the Jews in Arabia. You know, after they caused a lot of mischief in the land. So Rasulullah says when he takes the army and no one can conquer the fort. It's such, you know, strong fortified area and no one can conquer it. Various companions go and they come back. Until what Rasulullah says that to, tomorrow I will give the banner to the one who loves Allah and His Messenger and is loved by Allah and His Messenger. <laughs> and the next day he calls Ali radiyan, and he hands him the banner. And after, his, after curing his, his eyes which were infected, he gives him the banner and he tells him that go and you invite the people to Allah. Invite them to Islam first. And if they refuse, then fight them. Ali Radha took the banner, and the companions say that he ran so fast with it that no one else was even ready. You know, everybody was just getting ready, and they see Ali Radha taking off for, for this fort by himself. And finally, the army starts following behind. And again, this is the character of Ali that he fears nothing. And when it, when it comes to standing up for what is right, then he will do that in the midst of anybody and everybody. Whether it pleases them or displeases them, he doesn't care. So someone who feels like the right has been taken from him, who has this character, will not remain silent about it. And yet, Ali Radhan supports Abu Bakr Radhan and for the, for, for the most part, even though there wasn't an official no. title of Chief Justice during the time of Abu Bakr, and this is the position he acts in during the Khilafah of Abu Bakr. Radio. During the time of Omar, Radio, there was an official title of Chief Justice, and he, he that is Ali. Radio. But now if I look at the character of Abu Bakr, Radio. you know, when he became Muslim, he was the richest man in Arabia. The richest male in Arabia, 40,000 dirham, at a time when you could buy a cow for three dirham. So if you exchange that into money this time, you know, you're talking 12 million dollars at least, as far as what it had to buy, what he could buy. And yet he spends all of that on a Rasulullah, so without any hesitation on a Rasulullah and on the family of Rasulullah to the extent that Allah SWT himself sent message to Rasulullah asking him to ask Abu Bakr 
that that whatever he wants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recompense him, recompensate him for everything he has done. And Abu Bakr radiallahu's response was, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu I myself and my wealth belong to no one except for you. My being and my wealth doesn't belong to me. Doesn't belong to my children or anybody else except for you, Ya Rasulullah. <laughs> Uh, this is the character of Abu Bakr and we see the character of Sayyidina Ali and we see how they supported each other so for somebody to bring issues that oh you know there were problems with them you know this is you're, you're creating issues where there are none but during the time after the first six months of the Khilaf of Abu Bakr when, when all of the apostate areas were brought into line the hypocrites you know because you have all of these companions who have sacrificed for the religion, and so they understand the the, the meaning and the uh, and, and and of the religion, and they understand the status of Rasulullah Sallallahu So they have sacrificed all of this. So the hypocrites they can't get ahead up. So they stay underground. During the Khilafah of Umar, running on the same thing. All of the companions are there. These people who, who truly have a, a, a hardcore understanding of the religion and who are willing to give up anything for this. So if anybody falls out of line, they put them back in line. So again, the hypocrites. Every time, you know, it's like whack-a-mole. Uh, you know, they stick their head out and somebody knocks it down immediately. You know, don't even let it get 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 anywhere where you know you start getting rumors or whispers going on through the people Ali Radio is chief justice during the Khilaf of Umar Radio and again people try to create issues between the two you know, simplest example of this well two examples one is and then I'll end one is that when Umar Radio was invited to Jerusalem because the Christians of Jerusalem when they surrendered to the Muslim army, they said that we will not give hand over the keys to the city except for the leader of the Muslims. So unless he comes, we won't give you the keys to the city. So Omar Radion set out from Medina all the way to Jerusalem, all by himself and one companion, and that was it. He didn't take this whole entourage, you know, security and all of this stuff. He himself, and one companion and everybody you know who knows the story when they were entering the city he was pulling the reins of the camel while the companion was sitting up top because that's what the turn was and it was his turn to go and they insisted that no you sit because you're the leader and he said no so we had an agreement and it's my turn to pull the camel or pull the reins of the camel and you will be riding in the city but so he goes by himself when he left, he appointed Ali Radu in charge of Medina Munawwara. And, in, and in, in essence, in charge of the Muslim lands. So if Ali Radu had an issue with somebody else being the Khalifa, he could have easily created a coup and overthrown Omar Radu, but he did not. The other thing is that Omar Radu, he, he said toward the end of his life, he said, if Ali had not been present, Omar would have been destroyed. Because there were a few issues that Umar Radio made a decision on which were not correct and Ali Radio fixed them and corrected him. And out of thankfulness to this, Umar Radio used to say if it had not been for Ali, Umar would have been destroyed. destroyed. We'll continue next week, inshallah. Again, right now I'm talking about the situation that ended up creating the situation of Karbat, inshallah. Uh, where today is the 24th of Zil Hajj. So next month is will be Muharram, which is about to start. The 29th of, Muha of August will most likely be the 10th of Muharram, which is Saturday. 
So the intention is to have a program uh, in honor of Imam Hussein al-Islam and the martyrs of Karbala uh, that Saturday here. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit after, after Salat, inshallah. But uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and uh, help us understand and uh, fill our hearts with his true love and the true love of his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all those who they love, inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah, go ahead and make sunnah.